today we will be testing the vector scalar indicator. But before we do, if you have not watched the first video on the channel and all the videos after that, you need to go do that now. Here at the Academy of Forex, we are building the best trading system possible as a team. There is also a link down below to sign up for TradingView. You can save a little bit of money if you use the link below to sign up for your account. You can also find a link below to join us on Discord. Lastly, if you would like a list of all the indicators we have tested along with their win rates, but you aren't interested in watching all the videos on the channel, you can sign up for our $9 Patreon and you will receive the complete list of indicators. We also would like to introduce our Patreon exclusive Discord channel. As a $9 Patreon, you will be invited to join an exclusive Discord channel where we will give you a list of winning indicators and links for the MT platform, give you winning strategies, post trade ideas, give advanced advice, and much more. So click the link below to join our Patreon. All right, as I said today, we will be testing the vector scalar indicator. Before we do though, I wanted to put the testing scoreboard up for everyone to see. So to date, we have tested a total of 63 different strategies with 16 of them being profitable. We've also tested a total of 813 indicators with 330 of them being winners. The best ones so far were able to achieve a 100% win rate. Now you need to go back and watch those videos to understand the context of how they were able to achieve that. So go back and watch those videos and see what you can get out of those winning indicators. We've also retested in the advanced testing 24 of the winning indicators. Eight of them have been able to maintain the winning status. The best one, a 76% win rate. Now keep in mind that we test most of these strategies and indicators on the Forex and crypto market, but they can be applied to just about any market and time frame universally. All right, so today's indicator is the vector scalar indicator and you can see it here on the bottom of the screen and so it looks very similar to the stochastic uh, indicator and the stochastic indicator was kind of the inspiration uh, behind this particular indicator and so it is not the stochastic even though it does look very similar to it uh, basically it has some other uh, calculations that uh, create the oscillating lines and, and such how they are. Now I did go in and I did make a, slop, a slight modification to this. Uh, I changed the uh, level here. Uh, no, sorry, uh, changed the level here. Uh, this was the upper band level. I changed that to 100. The lower band level here, I changed to zero. And the reason why I did that is because uh, what we are looking for uh, essentially is going to be, or at least one part of it, is going to be the cross of these two lines. So as the blue line crosses down below the orange line, uh, that's going to be a signal to go short. As the blue line crosses up above the uh, orange line, that's going to be a signal to go long. Another uh, aspect of it or another uh, kind of component to it is that the uh, at least the blue line has to uh, have been in this upper zone here, kind of in an overbought type zone or down below this lower band in a um, kind of oversold type position. And so that really gives us kind of the extreme so that way we can look for a reversal point. Uh, now, the problem is, is that uh, just like the uh, stochastic indicator, what we will often get is we will get moments where 
the lines max out to the upside or the downside and they just kind of stay pinned there for a while as price continues to move in a specific direction. So here's an example of that where the lines have maxed out to the upside and price continues to climb and climb and climb and climb and climb. Now, if you look really closely, and let me see if I can zoom in on this. There we go. If we look really closely, you can see that quite a few times here, we actually have crosses of these lines. And so the blue line crosses down below that orange line multiple times in here. But if we scroll it back here to where uh, you can actually see the whole indicator. You see that you really can't tell those lines are crossing. And so uh, those just are um, kind of slight anomalies as the indicator is maxed out here and is just kind of twitching its way through these slight pullbacks. So we needed some ability to kind of designate when there was an actual cross and good move taking place with this indicator. And so what I've done is I've moved those upper bands and lower bands kind of to a pretty far extreme point. And what we're going to do is the oscillating lines need to be maxed out above or below the upper band or lower band, and they need to cross. And then the blue line needs to cross either the upper band to the downside or the lower band to the upside back into this middle zone. And so, for example, we get a push to the top side here, we get a cross and right here, we get the uh, blue line that crosses back into the center zone. That would then be our signal to go short. Uh, and then the, refer the reverse side on the long side. So it maxes out down here blue line crosses above the orange line and the blue line crosses back into the center zone. All right, that was a lot to explain. Took a really long time to get through all that. I apologize. So let's go ahead and get on with the testing so that way this video doesn't get too long. All right, so we get our first push to the downside here and we get our cross of the blue line up above the orange line. And you can see that we actually get right here, that blue line actually crosses back up above that lower band there. So that would be the first long signal right there. Let's go ahead and play this forward some. All right, so we get a pretty heavy pullback right here. Uh, rebounds pretty strongly there, but it looks like it just barely misses our stop before it's able to uh, kind of curl up and start pushing its way back to the top side there. We make another push down here, uh, kind of retesting this area, and then we get the push to the upside that we're looking for. Now let's see if we got a cross here in the meantime. It looks like we might have which would have actually stopped us out. Yes. So we actually got that right there. So we got that is a short signal right there as price maxed out to the upside, crossed back, uh, blue line crosses down below the orange and the orange or uh, sorry, the blue line comes back into the center zone would have given us a short signal and you can see that pretty much immediately we just continue to blast right through the roof there and that one does stop us out as well let's go ahead and continue on All right, we pick up another short right here and unfortunately pretty much immediately we get a really heavy push to the upside there which does come up and stop us out again on this one all right so what i'm going to do now is go ahead and fast forward through the rest of the testing that way things don't get too long and we'll pick this up when we're at the end of the year
all right so that's going to put us at the end of the year right there before we take a look at what this was able to achieve i'd like to give a quick shout out to our discord server here this is our discord server it's free to join most of the channels here are free you're welcome to join take part of the conversations happening in the channels here uh, but we do have a patreon only channel set up just for our patrons to take advantage of where we post some really great advanced information uh, we have uh, strategies that we've outlined you get the list of indicators like i said in the beginning of this video and the list of strategies that we have tested including the winning strategies uh, our admin jay is posting some regular market analysis of the forex market and futures market uh, one of our members sasquatch here is an awesome forex prop trader putting up charts like this where he's marked out areas of support and resistance areas of interest and even sometimes trades that he is looking to take some of our other members are also putting up market analysis of the forex market and marking out those trades that they are taking as well and so you can see uh, that we just have some really great information everybody's helping everybody out uh, helping everybody out and just kind of supporting everyone helping everybody to just grow and get better i highly recommend that you uh, join us and uh, check it out here all right back to our indicator here let's get this thing back in focus man we got a lot of trades within the one year's time that is a lot haven't had one like this in a while let's go ahead and count it out so one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So we have 25 trades all together and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 winning trades. And so obviously that is not going to meet the 60% criteria that we are looking for. Uh, this indicator gave us a lot of trades within the one year's time. 25 trades uh normally that could be a good thing but that definitely once you start hitting around 20 or above you start getting into the over trading area and once we get into the over trading area what we generally find is that there are indicators that are just way too quick and they're picking up on just every little slight movement in the market and trying to throw a signal uh, for a, a trend directional change or reversal that just isn't actually happening. And so just every little small correction, every little small pullback, it's throwing a, a signal that that is a trend di direction change or a reversal in the market. And you end up with just losing trade after losing trade after losing trade like we did on this one so uh this one is going to go on the no list and we will move on to the next indicator from here mm -hmm.